Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of The Real Podcasters, the show where we talk all things movies, TV shows, video games, and a bunch of other things in no particular order. My name's Reagan, as ever, and I'm joined once again by my decidedly tired-looking co-host. It's Dan. Evening. <laughs> what is with just, like, the, the sort of, like, laid back just... Right? Hello. Hi. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be because I've got a mouthful of tea. <laughs> that seems fair. Okay. You know, as is British tradition, oh, you that... always have a cup of tea when podcasting. Well, no. Occasionally, it's either water or it's actual booze if we're talking about something rubbish. So, clearly, we're not talking about rubbish this week. I mean, mm. more to be confirmed, <laughs> more to be discussed. <laughs> <laughs> to be reported in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, to be reported in like the next like however long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yes, this week we are talking about the Mandalorian season three. So it's actually the first bit of Star Wars stuff I think we've covered since Obi Wan Kenobi. I think last summer. I think it was. Yeah, the last time we covered anything Star Wars related was Obi Wan Kenobi, yeah. and then before that was Mando season whatever. Then it was the lack of Boba Fett. Yeah, we will probably address those a little bit, seeing it's been a while since we've actually spoken about that. Um, but as ever, um, if this is a sort of podcast that you enjoy listening to, um, of course, any support would be greatly appreciated. We're available on a variety of platforms. Uh, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Audible, Amazon Music, Podbean, Pocket Cast, and CastBox. I'm saying that very, very quickly because I'm sick of saying it. Um, technically still available on YouTube to, like, a month ago. So... If you still if you still like subscribe to that, that's fine. Um, I don't know when we're gonna put anything else up on that. Um, maybe when Vodafone starts giving me some nice broadband, that that'd be quite nice. Um, but yes, you can support us all on there. Um, most of them have, you can review as well. Um, that certainly helps us just a little bit. Um, or if this isn't the sort of thing that you're interested in, and you think it's absolute rubbish, give it to someone else. Share it to someone else. <laughs> You know, there's 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 bound to be someone out there, and as Dan always mentions every single week, it's literally the cheapest thing that you can do to help us. Yes, and there is a cost of living crisis in Britain, and literally this is free, like free, 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 free. Are we actually still in a cost of living crisis? I don't even know anymore. I didn't actually get like the T-shirt for it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen the price of everything? Have you gone outside? I've again? seen the price of cheese, and it's. What? Have you seen the price of fuel? It's... Have you seen the price of cheese? Have you seen the price of literally everything? Of course I know the price of fuel, Dan, which, which is why we keep on doing this over webcam. <laughs> <laughs> if it was cheaper, it would be different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, thanks, government. Yeah, thanks. Um, but yes, you can support us all on there. We're also on Instagram, where where you get most of our updates. And we're both on Letterboxd, me as a personal account, Dan for Graveyard Chit Chat, the podcast that he hosts, uh, that I dip in and out of every week. Uh, not every week, just whenever we can actually get to it. Um, but de- I mean, definitely support that one as well, because that's a lot of fun. Uh, please. Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anytime I think, I, I just immediately think of Monty from from Stuart Little. I cannot help it. It's just please. Uh, it's fun. It's funny you should actually mention that because yeah. over when we discussed the Evil Dead from 2013, you watched Stuart Little. Uh, no. Oh. Uh, the viewings for that are very close to 50, which is just mind blowing. To be uh, to be quite honest, I'm not bitter. Like, because I literally posted it and then, like, checked the next day because I always check to make sure that it is published, etc. And then it was, like, 42, and I'm like, what? <laughs> so, I mean, people are clearly hyped about Evil Dead, so thank you for listening. I mean, clearly. Like, I mean, well, I'm you know, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the next episode for that one is going to be on Evil Dead, which I've seen that Dan hasn't yet. So that's really funny. If oh he's angry now should be illegal quite yeah. should be honestly illegal I imagine if it was terrible doesn't matter we're not talking about the Evil Dead on this one we're talking about the Mandalorian season three which uh, technically finished a week ago when this episode actually goes out um, because that's just how time works um, I'm not able to get to this any sooner than we do um, Dan has only 
just started watching it. I think you started watching it either just before or just after the finale dropped, didn't you? Uh, I started on... Well, it's Sunday today. I started it on Thursday and finished it on Saturday morning. That's pretty good going, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. I was actually planning on just watching, like, obviously with it being two, like, eight episodes, I was planning on just going, like, two, 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 two. But I was just like, eh, you know what? I might as well just watch the entire thing. Why not? Um, I'll be curious if you can do that for The Last of Us and Chernobyl for, for next month. That's... That's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. Like, that that's going to happen. Like, The Last of Us, 100%. Like, that is getting binged. Yeah. Spoilers. We're going to be talking about that next month. Um, but, yes, talking about Mandalorian. So, before we delve into Season 3, of which I'm sure we've got plenty of things to see on, um, just some brief thoughts on Season 1 and 2, and I suppose a bit of Book of Boba Fett, because that's kind of required viewing for, like, an hour or so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Mandalorian Season 1, for me, I still really like i really like that one a lot there was a lot of trepidation for sure especially because that's coming out at the tail end of disney's star wars sequel thing that they did um that in itself is a discussion and a half that we're not going to get to anytime soon um but i still thoroughly enjoyed it but i still maintain this i think season two i think was the best in fact it's probably the best kind of star wars we've had in years quite frankly outside of something yeah. like episode 8, which, you know, I said it. I like it. <laughs> that's, that is never not going to be a hot take on the internet. That's just, that's just a joke. Um, and Book of Boba Fett for me, um, the, the best episodes are still technically the worst because they're not Boba Fett. Um, though it is essentially Mandalorian Season 2.5, which I think is what we refer to it as beyond the lack of Boba Fett yeah. back in Christ whenever we did it because it was it was like episode 3 that we did I haven't actually put that back out on Spotify and so if it's still on YouTube um, but I'm sure it was yeah, very yeah I'm pretty early. sure it's like the third episode we did it's either like the third or the fourth episode mm. I'm pretty adamant it was the last time that we actually recorded anything in the same room outside of in the Comic Con stuff yeah, yeah <laughs> would have been god that's so long ago <laughs> <laughs> I feel old now. Well, that, that's what happens when it's like fifth, yeah, fifth, 40 odd episodes in. 50 episodes yeah, I was, in. Yeah, I was say it was episode 3, we're on 52. Ouch. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> um, We've come a long way. Good. Have we? <laughs> well, I mean, we're not professional, okay. so <laughs> you tell oh, me. <laughs> um, but yeah, in terms of your general thoughts on like the previous Mando stuff, what are your thoughts on it? Okay, so, I I mean, I'm much in the same opinion, to be honest, Reagan. I still really like season one. I still really like season two. It's difficult to say which I prefer. I think I generally preferred two mm -hmm. over one. It's not that one was terrible. It really wasn't. It was great. But yeah. season two was just a bit more interesting for me, personally. Mm. And then Boba Fett, yeah, it was, it was all right. Show. I wouldn't say it was quite disappointing in ways because you know of a character like boba fett has some sort of you know legendary status within the star wars universe and this is the show oh, we yeah. got like ugh. it's kind of like obi-wan kenobi in ways as well like kind of just yeah but, it's yeah, really I, sad especially I like for obi-wan kenobi it's yeah, it's. I mean, it's it, it's quite sad with even something like Obi Wan Kenobi, which I think was even more anticipated than any other like Star Wars thing in the last few years, and I've just not felt yeah compelled to go back to it at all, um, let alone Book of Boba Fett because. Oh, I've never well, had the like compulsion to go back and rewatch them, like both of them, not the slightest mm, bit interested in rewatching I... them. Yeah, I think I went back and watched the final three episodes. I think only because they were the more um, vaguely interesting stuff. Um, yeah. Mandalorian season two, I'll go back to whenever. To be honest, I'll watch any episode, and that and that really says like even for like the weakest yeah. one, which I think was the second episode with the weird spider snow things. Um, that's probably the weakest, but it's still a really damn good episode. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I liked all the episodes in season two, so I couldn't really mm. say which one was the weaker one. Like, because again, if I watched them, like, if I started just from like season one and just worked my way up to season three, I might have different thoughts on it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I just have not had the time to just sit no, and binge no, two fine. seasons worth. <laughs> like, well, at all. wait, wait, not me. I mean, that's exactly that. But also, um, I'm always conscious of the fact that you're not nearly as big on Star Wars as like me. Which I'm seeing as wearing a Mandalorian shirt because I'm clearly a full-on nerd. Um, so even talking about like the possibility of reviewing Man- Mandal season three, I was thinking, is this going to be a me one this time, or we'll do it together? Um, mm. So obviously, with season three again, widely anticipated, just, like lots of marks in for it. Um, in terms of the general. Um, sort of synopsis for the series. You've obviously, obviously got Pedro Pascal back in basically voice only, which I'll get to, um, as the Mandalorian himself, Din Djarin, who's chosen to travel to the uh, ruins of Mandalore, um, obviously his home world, um, to sort of find some form of forgiveness for removing his helmet and going against the yes. Weir. He must bathe in the waters of Mandalore to redeem himself. Gotta go for a swim and then he's alright. Yeah. <laughs> Which, when you say it like that, that sounds absolutely ridiculous. Some other yeah. things are absolutely ridiculous. But, oof, ooh, spoilers, sorry, spoilers. Um, but, no, I was certainly interested in seeing where this would go, especially with the return of Grogu. Um, once again, played by Puppet. Um, doesn't have a name. It's just it's just Puppet. puppets. <laughs> um, you know, of course, his, his abilities with the Force are a lot stronger compared to Season 2 because he's had a bit of time with with good old CGI Luke Skywalker. <sighs> I don't miss that face. I'm really glad that face isn't in this season. Uh, I've also got Key Sackoff back as bo in a much more pronounced role compared to last, last season. Essentially... The Mandalorian as a show and as a title now has a number of meanings because it's not just about Din Djarin himself. Yeah, it's not really the Mandalorian anymore. It's the Mandalorian plus whoever else. Yeah, which is interesting for me because I've always been fascinated with Mandalorian culture anyway, and this series absolutely digs right into that. Um, oh, yeah, for some for people, sure. for better or worse, because some people are like, oh, so it's not Din, Din Djarin's show anymore. And I'm like... I don't mind personally, as long as it's still interesting. And f- yeah. for the most part, I, I I still enjoyed this season. I don't know where I stand. I mean, it's certainly not not as good as season two. I don't know if I like it more than season one. I'm not sure. Uh, it's a tough one because again, like, it would be easier to compare for me personally if I had watched like the seasons back to back. But I didn't. So I will say that from recollection of season one that I'm preferring season three to it slightly, but I don't think it's as good as season two. And that is just as a whole. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the biggest issues I think with this season is it's incredibly scatterbrained. Um, mm. For one, you've got the ge- the general plot, especially from the trailers, is that they're going to go on Mandalore to, you know do all that and you're thinking okay that's going to take the entire season because much like with season because it would be like season two where the whole thing is getting Grogu to a Jedi and that is the entire season yeah they get to Mandalore in, in episode two and you're like oh I do. <laughs> right yeah I was like that was very yep. quick and he's and he's in the waters I'm like okay he's already gone for a swim we've only been talking to him for like an hour and he's already swimming <laughs> well drowning but you know um, so immediately you're kind of sort of like taking a bit of back, like, oh, okay, so what is this season actually going to be about? It, it still is technically, um, because what what we're seeing is um, the whole of the whole of the Mandalorians coming together to retake their homeworld. Obviously, we're going into spoilers now because you kind of have to. It's been out. Yeah, you can't really sh- you can't really make this like yeah spoiler free. Now. No, no, you can't. You really spoilers. Can't. There are Mandalorians in the show, The Mandalorian. <laughs> it's not the Mandalorian. It's the Mandalorians. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I actually wouldn't have minded if they just referred to this series as The Mandalorians. I think that would have been perfect. 
because I think it would have been a, a very on the nose kind of thing if they, you know, if the first episode was just the Mandalorian, then when more Mandalorians start coming in, they change the title to the Mandalorians. <laughs> I think that would have been, like, really on the nose, though. Well, to be honest, I mean, Marvel kind of, kind of did the same thing with the Falcon and the Winter Soldier because the changes to yeah. Captain America and the Winter Soldier, which is, like... Yeah. They've just taken the Captain America 2 title and just added and to it. How <laughs> original. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm still on the positive side of things, but there is some really weird stuff that they do with this that I'm not particularly big on. Um, but I suppose we'll delve into mm. your general thoughts before we go any further. Okay, well, as I say, this is... For me, it's a bit better than Season 1. And that isn't, like, an absolute distaste for Season 1. Season 1's great, mm. you know, because it's it's a starter season. You know, it's not going to be, like, absolutely balls-to-the-wall perfect. It's not going to yeah. be... That's just the reality with, like, the first season. It's just sort of, like, a taster for things to come. So, obviously, getting back into this, I had to familiarise myself with characters. I mean, obviously, I know Grogu and yeah, the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. That one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one, yeah. The yeah. Mandalorian. Not Mandalorians, the Mandalorian. Uh, obviously, Bo-Katan and a couple of, like, the other main sort of Mandalorian fellas, yeah. we'll say. yeah. Yeah, there's some strange things in this episode, and not episode, rather, the series. Mm-hmm. That it, as you say, it is a bit scatterbrained in places, but I wouldn't say it affects like my negativity towards it. I'm like, okay, we're doing something a bit different, and clearly, you know, the whoever was in charge of making these decisions, they thought, this is the way. This is the way we're doing things. Yeah, I went there. I was yep, I'm gonna If I don't reference that <laughs> at least five times in this episode. I was really trying to find a way to put it in organically without just saying, the way, Dan, this is the way. That was the only thing I was thinking of, yeah. whereas you actually found a way to do it. <laughs> this is yeah. the way to do it. <laughs> that that was the way to do it. Yeah, it was the way. <laughs> <laughs> was the way. Um, um, I'm, I'm a lot more positive on the fact that like we get to see Mandalore but I do have a bit of a nitpick with Mandalore in itself though like you know yeah I understand it's a ruin and etc but that like second episode is pretty brief on Mandalore it's like we're here you've had a bath thank you (laughs) (laughs) oh and there's a creature in the water and then we've got to (laughs) go yeah it's it's just Bo-Katan's like, right, get on the ship, we're oh. going. Because there, there is one aspect, and I'll get, I'll get into this bit now, before we delve into anything else, because I've got a really major gripe with Din Djarin. Gripe. <laughs> and his stupid <laughs> group of Mandalorians who were just petty and stupid. <laughs> his stupid pet. His stupid group yeah. of Mandalorians. Okay, so, I don't think I've right. ever been expecting something like that. So... <laughs> Season one, we are led to believe that all Mandalorians never remove their helmets. You're not allowed to do that. That's just not a thing. Um, even though I'm sat yeah, there thinking, the that is complete rubbish. Even from my limited exposure to the Clone Wars, I'm very much aware of Katie Sackhoff's cartoon face showing up routinely. So I'm like, okay, what's the deal with this? And then you get to bo in Season 2, and they establish that now he is a child of the Watch. This offshoot um, group of Mandalorians who broke away after everything kind of went to went to poo. Um, and tried to re-establish the Mandalorian ways, but like extremely old school. Um, essentially yeah. doubling down on the idea that it's stupid. And Din Djarin's arc across Season 2 is trying to find his place in that. And him... Like removing his helmet has a lot of meaning in season two, especially when you get to the end and he removes his his, his helmet to show Grogu what he looks like for the first time, and you're like, "I was already crying. I'm doing it again." <laughs> John Favreau, yeah, <you> bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when you get in the trailers, this he's gonna go to Mandalore to um like um to sort of find forgiveness. removing his helmet and i'm sat there thinking you already know full well 
the that your little group of Mandalorians is not the actual way. Yes, I know he's raising us, but he's he now knows, um, and because everyone else has told him that it's stupid, and I know that it's stupid. When I hear it in the trail, I'm like, I'm not interested in you doing this because it's stupid. Yeah. Granted, I really appreciate the fact that this season does actually triple down on the fact that it's stupid and establishes that there is another way. I'm going to sat there thinking, thank yeah. the maker, because it is just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just triply annoying that we don't see his face. Now, I mean, I'm I'm not too fussed on that to be it's honest. It's Pedro Pascal's if, face, though. We need his face. <laughs> I think if they're gonna do that again, right, they're gonna wait till like Mando is completely done with, and then they'll do something special. I would hope. If they did it for like every season, I would just I wouldn't find it anything special because I mean that that bit in season two is just so heartfelt. Yeah, and I I mean, it's, I mean, granted, with this season, it's more like scheduling is the reason we don't see his face is because um if you see in the credits there's two extra names um and they are at, at the very end just before it cuts to like the black background with everything um and, the, and that's yeah. the two stunt doubles for the mandalorian um they get pro- proper credit this time around because pedro pascal was very rarely on set um because he was busy doing the last of us which naturally yeah. requires his face quite often. Surprisingly enough, he's not actually just well, randomly yeah, I would, wearing. I would think so. <laughs> he isn't just wearing like sort of like a bootleg version of like a Boba Fett mask because the Mandalorian wouldn't have come out at this point. It doesn't exist. Um, so most of his stuff is voice. Everything else is done by um, by the stunt doubles, which is probably why we never actually see his face in, in this season, which was quite weird. Because I think for yeah. me, um, beyond him wanting to go and find forgiveness, um, Din Djarin doesn't really have much to do in this season. No, and I think that's where Bo-Katan comes in. It, it, she kind of becomes the lead character, really. Mm-hmm. Dijin is just sort of pushed aside a bit, which I get in ways, but... At the same time, I'm like, you've like, we've had two seasons where this guy's the lead, and now he's suddenly like getting pushed to the side. Huh. Well, it looks to me okay, like it's then. awkward because I really like Kate Sakov as Borkatan. Oh yeah, she's brilliant, and I really love that character. She's certainly one of the strongest things in this season. Um, I've seen like enough online yeah. discourse of people like moaning and stuff, and I'm just like, oh, 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 just shut up, seriously. Um, like you guys are never happy. You really aren't. Welcome to the Star Wars fandom. <laughs> Star Wars fandom post-2012. Great. <laughs> Hasn't gotten any better. Um, one of the other reasons I don't talk about Star Wars on this bloody podcast, because it's just mind-numbing. Um, but at least if they're shifting focus, it's where the character is actually quite interesting. Um, especially yeah. because she is utterly lost in this season. Um, yeah, I mean, from that like Gecko episode... She's basically rock bottom, pretty much. Mm-hmm. She's lost everything. She's lost her friends, and because she doesn't return with the dark saber, she basically loses all the pals. She's the last one on her little rock, essentially. Yeah, literally. I mean, I'll give it this though. Her her ship is absolutely badass, and I want it. I want it in Lego oh, yeah. form immediately. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. Do you know what it is? I will say this now. Ever since watching The Mandalorian, I get a lot of Star Wars Lego sets getting advertised to me. That's concerning. the way. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Hang on. You cannot make that face if you're the one that started doing it first. (laughs) Yeah, but mine was really well thought out, though. Yours was just sort of desperate. Are we still talking about this is the way? Are we talking about just something else in life? (laughs) <laughs> I mean, this is the way. <laughs> that is shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> God damn it. I mean, well, I mean, like it's interesting because you mentioned where they're like losing the dark saber and something like, oh, there's going to be some like tension between the two of them because he has the dark saber and she wants it. Um, he just yeah. hands it to her. It's like, oh, there you go. Yeah, because it's basically like the whole 
thing of that he saves she saved her his life and that is like a debt that he'll never pay so he just hands it over there's no like you know classic like Mandalorian challenge well because it's, it's just like here you go again a lot of my issues with it are then rectified in the season finale that <laughs> there's a lot of things that are like not fixed but like I'm less annoyed with namely with the dark saber because because like, I'm still I know the dark saber is in like the clone wars and rebels and stuff so there's more to that um so I don't know if there's extra stuff to know about the whole logic of the dark saber the whole thing of like um oh you can only wield it if you win it in combat so it's assumed that you have to kill um the person who wielded before yeah because when Din Djarin's using it, it's incredibly heavy. It doesn't really work properly because he didn't actually kill Moff Gideon at the end of Season 2. Um, but then you have, in Episode 2 of Season 3, bo quickly wheeled in the Darksaber to deal with... Um, the weird spider... Evil spider droid dude. Droid thing. thing. Um, yeah. He's wielding it absolutely fine. Um, so, I mean, I'm sorry, I think, yeah. okay, so you don't actually have to kill anyone. You just have to be um, okay according to the script essentially the the dark saber has access to the script <laughs> i'm like if it has access to the script it's a pen it, it isn't a sword anymore <laughs> well you know what they say the pen is mightier than the sword it bloody is <laughs> i mean the the, the space crayon is mightier the than the dark crayon. saber apparently <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> I mean, in this case, it clearly is. You know, this is the way. The dark crayon. Interesting. <laughs> oh god. But yeah, I thought that was really quite strange as well. Like, you know, you have to win it in combat. He doesn't kill him. Pretty much, just you know, leaves him, buggers mm. off. And yeah, he when he wields it, it looks heavy as hell. And then when. Bo-Katan saves him from the weird spider cyborg thing. I don't even know what the hell it's called. It's just a spider's eyeball Ass. thing. It's got a weird eye. Like a human eye. And she just kills it with, like, you know, ease doing the fling, 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 fling with the dark saber. And then it's done. And then that's it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like... It, again, I'm... Pr- I, it's entirely possible that I'm missing something with it. I mean, you know, I haven't experienced every single form of I mean, I don't know anything about this because I haven't watched like the Clone Wars or things like that but obviously I know it's in the Clone Wars so maybe there's more lore to it but for me this is all I know mm-hmm. so far but that's exactly that is that you shouldn't have to seek out the other stuff to actually understand it yeah that isn't fair because I mean there's a lot of Clone Wars stuff oh yeah what I've oh seen. yeah there's like, like seven oof. seasons and most of it was released out of order like I'm not even kidding. Like, technically, the first episode is in, like, season two. Like, right. chronologically, <laughs> you've got two episodes, and then you, and then, you, then you've got the movie, because that's four episodes sort of stitched into one. And I'm just like... Right. Well, idiot design as well, George Lucas, obviously. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, how is that helping anyone? I don't know. Like, I know if, if I went into that so blind... I mean, I haven't watched this at mm-hmm. all. I know of it. I haven't touched it, like, at all. So if that's the way it is, it's going to be super confusing oh, yeah. to me. For for reference, I think at one point Darth Maul actually wields the Darksaber because he comes back with his, with, with his robo-legs. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, like, who doesn't wield the Darksaber in the Clone Wars then? You know, like, we're going to get to, like, season, like, six episode and 13 some spider droids wielding it i would have said yoda because it's too because he's too short yeah i Main. went there <laughs> <laughs> yeah you yeah. did um yeah we've we've ranted a little bit on the dark saber but can you tell what kind of what kind of confused with the whole thing <laughs> yeah but it is though but again we shouldn't really have to like explore an entire like seven season thing of the clone wars just to get a better idea of Mm. what the dark saber is all about like we really shouldn't have to do that it was similar to what happened after watching um the snyder cut for the first time back in 2021 and superman's got like his black suit i've got a vague understanding of why he has it in the comics there's no explanation in i have no idea (laughs) i have no idea why (laughs) then i remember so well wasn't it like 
I remember, I mean, I don't know if it's right or not, but it was like, he dies, so his suit just changes colour or something like that. I, I don't know. I think <laughs> it's like a solar recharging thing. I think. But I don't know. Right. And some, and some guy responded and gave us like a really long explanation. It was like, well, I mean, if you're a comic book fan, you know this. I'm like, and? Like, explain it in the film. In this case, like, actually explain it in the series, because I'm just baffled as anything, but it's fine. Yeah, because God knows how many comics you would have to read in order to find that thing, and guarantee it would just be on, like, a couple of pages. Mm -hmm. Like... Um, But you see, it's fine. We don't don't, don't, don't have to worry about the Darksaber anymore, because it's gone. It's squished. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) It's very crumpled. It looks like a discarded banana peel. It really, it really does, does, to be honest. <laughs> like, and then like, Moff Gideon slips, Moff Gideon just smashes that thing. Just, oh, never mind. Oh. The best Scar armor couldn't protect him from the banana slip. Oh, well, we'll get to him. Because there's a lot to see on him. <laughs> Little pointy ears on his helmet. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah, as we mentioned before, one of the big things that this series does is delve way more into Mandalorian culture, which for me is fantastic because I, I am, I've always been fascinated by it. Uh, for me, though, I find it really funny. And I, I mean, I'm not sure how accurate this is, but I feel like a lot of the people that dress up as Mandalorians got to pick how their Mandalorians actually looked. And it's, it would be like the equivalent of going to Comic-Con and there's just some random people dressed as Mandalorians and just sort of come into a group together and they just sort of start start walking around. It's like that, essentially, because some of them are like, yeah. your armor looks badass, and other ones, you haven't tried hard enough. <laughs> it's like they're, they're sort of like outlaws in ways. Like, you know, there's no definitive like dress code yeah. for them as long as they have like the, the, the mythosaur emblem and stuff like that and they go from, you know, they... They follow the way of the Mandor. Mm-hmm. So I don't really think it matters how they look. Because, I mean, like, again, in, in this season, you know, you see some that are really, like, quite decked out. Oh, and you see some who are just, like, in very, like, sort of basic armor. Yeah, one of the one of my... I'm not going to say one, one of my favorite scenes, but easily one of the funniest is when they're all, like... Um, they're about to retake Mandalore and they're all sat around, um, like, on rocks and stuff, having food. And they're, like... I can't eat because everyone's looking. I'll go and hide behind this rock so I can actually eat my food because that's how it works. <laughs> You're not. You... <laughs> and I'm just sitting there thinking. I'm self-conscious. Thinking the dinner tables at like Mandalore must have had giant walls between each chair <laughs> <laughs> because it's such a private moment to be having like your burger or something. <laughs> 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 Again, just Jeez, like, stop looking at me. I'm trying to have my food. <laughs> like, Shh, stop it. Again, just Grogu, look <laughs> elsewhere. Uh, Grogu doesn't have a lot to do in this season, though, does he? Not really. Besides doing a few flips, not really. Doing a few flips and pressing, nor constantly on on the chest buttons of Taika Waititi. Of all people, just no, 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 no. no, no. I'm not gonna lie. At first, I was like, nah, that looks a bit weird. Oh no, he has a yes or no button. Yes, it's fine. I like it now. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Any scenes involving that just made me chuckle, especially with the like when he's basically trying to get, well, he's trying to go along with the plan of going with all the Mandalorians. It doesn't really work. And the Mandalorian's like, you're not going. <laughs> and Grogu starts like walking away from him. No, 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 no. But Grogu, we're not having this discussion. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, I think it's that as well, because at least it gives him the option to kind of talk, because I think everyone's kind of sat there thinking, okay, is he actually going to speak? And I think yeah. at one point he nearly does, and I think, I can't remember what's, which episode it was, but there's a point when... Um, when Rogu, Dinjarin, and Borkatan are on the ship, and both and both of them say this is the way. And then you sort of hear him sort of sort of like croak. And I think some people have taken it as him trying to say yeah. this is the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking, do I want him to speak? But also, do I want him to speak like Yoda? I'm thinking, is it just Yoda being an awkward, or is that just how his how his entire species talks? Because there's only <laughs> anxious Yoda. Because <laughs> there's only one other other member of his species that we've seen. I think it's Yaddle or something, who's like past like the Jedi Council. I think pops up in the background of one of the prequels. 
so I assume they said nothing. Um, but I'm like, do they do they also talk backwards? I really want to know. <laughs> but most importantly, do we actually want them to talk? Because I'm not sure. Well, not really. Like, I mean, I'm kind of fine with them. And like, you know, he's he's like a little baby. Like, I'm not going to expect him well, to have I mean, like, like a full 50. intelligent conversation. <laughs> you know. So go, yes, Jaren. So he talks like Bean. <laughs> oh yes, I was wondering <laughs> who who would talk first. <laughs> Oh, for God's sake. Breaking news, Tom Hardy oh. is, is revealed to be voicing Grogu. <laughs> I was raised by the Mandalore. <laughs> Molded by us. I was born in, in, in the dark. <laughs> I was born in the darkness. <laughs> raised <laughs> by the Mythosaur. Oh no, what have we done? <laughs> oh Christ, what have we done? <laughs> um, I mean, that's what we... Uh, no. I didn't <laughs> see the mythosaur until I was a man. <laughs> right, okay, that's it. Stop, stop it. We're going to yeah, ruin it. Last little bit of Grogu before, before we go nuts. Um, <laughs> we do get a flashback to Order 66. I'm not going to lie. I was convinced after that final trailer dropped and you see a little bit of like a couple of Jedi um, hold Max and Clone Troopers. I legitimately thought, are they going to bring Hayden Christensen in as like a quick cameo for Order 66? Yeah, I was thinking that as well. Like that brief clip. I mean, you kind of instantly think you're going to see some cameo because it's it's Disney. Mm-hmm. They're going to do that if they're going to have the total option to, but we didn't, which I'm sort of glad about in a way. Well, I like, I think it's if to say like the biggest reveal, I think in terms of like cast members was Ahmed Best coming back to the Star Wars universe as the Jedi Master that saves Grogu. Um yes. In as opposed to him returning as Jar Jar to do that. Thank God. Um, <laughs> oh, no. I, I don't think I could have taken it seriously. Oh, no, no, of course not. Um, like, considering what that scene is, and it is a pretty harrowing scene. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, it, it's a lot more fun than, like, episode three in, in its entirety. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you're actually, like, really kind of in the moment there. You're like, oh, my God, like, Grogu could literally die at any moment. Mm-hmm. Like, he's living this, this poor little kid who's 80 years old for some odd reason, because that's just not how his species works. 80, 80, whatever. Yeah. And so, like, when you see all these Jedi being slaughtered, it's like, oh, God. Like, yikes. But it it just looks really harrowing, and you start to really feel more for Grogu. I mean, like, who doesn't feel for Grogu? Because he's, you know, freaking adorable. I mean, yeah. Um, it's just one of those things. I mean, Pedro Pascal, as as we'll reference on numerous occasions when we get to The Last of Us, um, <laughs> all he does now is protect little children from big monsters. Yeah. <laughs> He's very, very good at that now. <laughs> yeah. That, that just seems to be what his career is going to be for the rest of time. Like, I mean, like you'd think he was new to the acting business. He's been doing it for decades. It just happens to be now. It suddenly yeah. jumped right up. <laughs> um, but no, it was really great to see Ahmed oh, Best at that point. I thought that was really awesome. Um, I know some people were theorizing as to who might have been the one to save Grogu. I think some people thought it was... Um, I can't remember the name of them. But it's the one in episode two that's in the library when Obi-Wan's looking for... Camino, she's, she's like she's, she's like the old the older one. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Joe yeah. Joe Pastor knew, I think might be. I forget the name. Um, people legitimately thought it was her for some reason. I was like, where are you getting your information from? Because there's no... <laughs> <laughs> where where are your sources? Because no offence, according to the tie-in video game to episode three, <laughs> she has no time for that because she's very dead. <laughs> very dead. <laughs> She's very dead. Although that one also has like an altered version of the ending of episode three when Anakin kills Obi Wan. <laughs> so I mean, there's that as well. I, I mean, yeah. that was a weird game as a kid. But anyway, um, there's also Christopher Lloyd. 
which I completely forgot was going to happen. Yeah. And I'm sort of thinking... The Jack Black cameo as well. Like, Well, I mean... It was just kind of one cameo after another, really. I was like, okay, who's next? That episode, <laughs> I still think, is possibly the worst one, I think. I think it's... <laughs> I'm not going to say it's like the it's absolute for worst it. because <laughs> for sure, it's definitely the weakest one. I think. Yeah, it's because again, I still like the season. I don't want to say like it was like you know the worst episode. Like it's, it's not like there was some good parts to it, just not the stuff with like the killer robots and stuff. Mm-hmm. I was kind of like, what are we doing? You're just sending the Mandalorian on a silly little errand because you won't allow him to go talk to the mercenaries. Really? <laughs> the Mandalorian? You're sending him to do this? Like, Mandalorian? Have you never heard of us? Last thing as well. It's is like, oh, we go it's... sort our droid problem. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of unfired guns, I think is the best way to describe this season, because especially yeah. at the end of season two and Book of Boba Fett, which those Mando episodes exist purely to just bring Grogu back in time for season three. There's absolutely no reason. Yeah. Um, and I, th- I think I've heard rumblings that that was some higher ups at Disney that wanted them to do that because they didn't like the idea of, of doing a season of Mandalorian without Grogu. And I'm sat there thinking, just make it interesting. But also, you you already have that because you're focusing on on the Mandalorian culture for most of this season. Yeah, Grogu's got next to nothing to do really until the very end. Like Grogu's only got stuff to do toward the mm. end. Like, and then you've got like when he's like accepted as the like Dinjarin's apprentice, mm-hmm. I think it is, or something like that. Adoptive son. Yeah, I think it's his because he actually may like canon now because he's <laughs> may now as well his, be like. <laughs> which, which I'm like, well, people already referred to him as the father anyway in season two, so it's it was barely like any kind of reveal. You got stuff with the, with like the dark saber, like, oh, what's gonna happen? Oh, he just hands it to her in like a field. Woo. Yeah, I I just find that like really really nitpicky because literally Bo-Katan challenges wolves. Is it wolves? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wolves? Yeah. Yeah, challenges wolves. They have a battle and, you know, it's the battle for the leadership of this band of mercenaries on this Star Destroyer that has now been scrounged by the Mandalorians. Yeah. Mercenary Mandalorians. So I was like, okay, so is Din Djarin gonna, like, challenge bo for the rightful ownership of the Dark Saber? No, he just gives her it. I'm like, what? Well, I mean, that's exactly that. Really? It's the fact that he was... He never has ever stipulated that he wants to rule Mandalore. It's not, it's not in his character. So, already, you're like... So, it's, it's literally like, this is the way, question mark at the this end. This is the way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> And he's doing that. But yeah, kind of I, I think it's definitely the, the weakest episode. But thinking about like just silly little things like that just honestly makes me hate that episode even more now. <laughs> well, I suppose one of the biggest things, of course, you've got Giancarlo Esposito back as Moff Gideon because, of course, you do. He's you know he's awesome. Um, Brilliant. Now wearing Mandalorian armor, which I thought, okay, that's actually quite badass to be honest. Um, yeah. This is more of a nitpick for me. I don't like the replacement for the Dark Troopers now. I like the fact that they're modelled after the original concept art for Boba Fett, when he was just all white. That's yeah. pretty cool. But I'm sat there thinking, are these guys still robots? Or are they people? Like, because they were grunting and stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, they are actually people. So I'm like, are they clones? Because I've got clones again. I'm like, have you guys so never done. bloody learned? Like, clones are so stupid <laughs> episode 9 proved that even further <laughs> yeah I was a bit like are they just like really buff robots no they're actually people this time yeah um, and of course we get the major confirmation as to what's been going on with Moff Gideon and all like the cloning and stuff from the last couple of seasons in reality he's been cloning himself to use the force yeah because do you know what it is? It, it's so stupid that it just reminds me of, like, some, like, science fiction horror film, like, those mm. classic, like, ones where, like, some mad scientist is basically trying to, like, create something, like, a monster in a way, but Moff Gideon is trying to do it, but he wants the blood of mm. Grogu, so he his clone can use the Force and be unstoppable. It's well, like... the worst thing is, though, is that okay. I actually 
don't mind the logic of that because even when I'd like, even when I jokingly decided to conceptualize some ideas for the sequel trilogy that I would have done, one of the ideas I had was having still having Finn be the protagonist, him being the Force user, and Rear and yeah. not being a Force user, but wanting to figure it out artificially. And I thought, yeah, maybe minus clones, because that's stupid. Um, but I don't mind the idea of trying to find an alternative way of using the Force without actually being force sensitive. That's actually quite cool because I figured that's kind of where Moff Gideon's yeah. going. Um, but the problem is now you've introduced clones. Three minutes later, they have a fight. Two minutes after that, everything explodes, and then one minute later, he maybe dies. And I'm like. <clears throat> <laughs> disintegrates you've, you've just told us there's like 11 ver- other versions of them and they're probably elsewhere as well you probably just got like a random sort of crate of like Moff Gideon's just like off in the corner they're absolutely fine <laughs> a crate a crate of a crate of Gideon's <laughs> like that whole entire sequence just goes so quickly and it doesn't leave any like it just leaves so many questions unanswered yeah really I will say this though I love the Mandalorian esque Praetorian guards. They are badass as hell. <laughs> yes, the Praetorian guards are freaking awesome. I mean, they look decidedly less like chess pieces compared to the Last Jedi. <laughs> yeah. But they still look <laughs> awesome. Um, that yeah. one was really, really cool. Um, and of yeah. course, you've got. Um, um, and they're, they're the ones that kill Paz Vizsla. These sort of like rival. Man, Mandalorian to Din Djarin from what's you know, like the big bulky one with like the with like the minigun kind of thing. He gets taken out at the end of the penultimate yes. episode. Um, at least there's actually a body count. Um, though I remember um, joking on with my girlfriend as we were going through the season. Like, I remember what point it is, but there's a moment where actually no, it was the end of this episode, the end, the end of the penultimate one. And you're like, oh, who's gonna get us? And we both joked on saying, well. Most of them are named characters, so they're probably okay. They're they're like big actors, so they're so you know they're absolutely <laughs> yeah. fine. And technically, yes, that's absolutely right because I mean, I mean, granted, Vizsla is actually voiced by John Favreau, which I thought was quite funny because I always forget that doesn't actually play him, but he mm-hmm. just voices him. So I'm like, okay, so he is actually gonna get it <laughs> because it isn't actually John Favreau. I, I will admit I do quite like that bit because it's it's kind of like Gideon's quest for power has consequence on everybody. Mm-hmm. Like so this guy chooses to sacrifice himself, which is a really cool scene, I must admit, with the guards and him battling like these three guards and it is it's really quite heroic, actually. Yeah, for sure. Um because I mean while he doesn't really have like a redemptive story arc or anything, he he is like a more like decent character by the end because initially he's always presented as quite sort of like don't really like you i'm being like you're pretty badass but i don't really like you yeah i mean like he's not very accepting of dinjar and especially you know learning the fact that he removed his helmet and then you know he has to kind of prove to him that he has redeemed himself with the pro- with the help of Bolkatan as well so then yeah he does absolutely redeem himself by sacrificing himself mm-hmm. but i think as well um what's actually quite interesting especially with that character is that um from what i'm aware of and i might be completely wrong i think um that the dark saber is actually forged by paz Vizsla's an- ancestor um i think i've got right. that right um again i'm not too well versed on the on like the mythology and stuff um, because because I kept on forgetting because I think he's canonically the first Mandalorian to actually become a Jedi because there was always that animosity between the right. Jedi and the Mandalorians. Um, that yeah, that much I know because they wouldn't stop harping on about it. Um, and I believe that his ancestor was like the first one, so I think he's the one that had the dark saber because Mandalorians wouldn't have a lightsaber. So he's like, screw it, I'll just make my own. And I'll make it look look like an actual sword because you guys have completely missed the point. No pun intended, because it's got a hell of yeah. a point on it. Um, but it's, it's a bit pointy. It is just a little bit pointy, as opposed to just sort of round at the end. I'm thinking of the line from like the dictator. It's just like it's too round. It has to be pointy <laughs> <laughs> with the uh, with the missiles. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that did it. As like as like a it connection. It sticks in ground and goes kaboom. <laughs> 
I think you have been watching too many cartoons, Supreme Leader. No, I have been watching research films. <laughs> no, you <laughs> clearly have been watching Star Wars. <laughs> you know what it is? It's kind of bad that we came to that, like, <laughs> conclusion with it. <laughs> Just like watching Mandalorian Season 3. By the way, it, may- it makes me think of a random offshoot clip from the bloody dictator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's yeah I will all. say it even though I do like the penultimate episode I hate how freaking Star Wars it gets I mean I know it's obviously how the Star dare Wars you Dan <laughs> okay but I just hate the fact that they do the duel and it's just basically freaking Obi-Wan and bloody Darth Vader or it's freaking Darth Maul and Qui-Gon it's basically that but without lightsabers and I'm sorry but that's the way I see it and I was just like okay it only really got exciting when you know he just crushes the dark saber like a blooming crisp well it does just kind of reaffirm like the whole thing with the dark saber is complete rubbish anyway um which that's that's what's a good thing and a bad thing because it's a good thing because it is absolutely stupid and it just doesn't make any sense but on the, on the other hand you've you've made such a big deal out of it and then you're just like Ugh. Just gonna discard it like a bit of fruit peel. And you're like, yeah, because it's like, just give me the Darksaber. Like, all this time, he's just wanting the Darksaber and he just crushes it with, well, like, exactly. No... I'm like, all this time, and you just crush it. Have you just. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Moff, what are you doing? <laughs> I mean, that being said, I do like the reveal at the end of, of, um, of the penultimate one where it is revealed that the Imperials have been on Mandalore the whole time. Um, building themselves up again. I'm like, especially after season two, when you're like, okay, you are really starting to hint at the idea that you are actually going to give us a bloody origin for the First Order in the sequels. I'm like, I'm vaguely okay with that because those films did bugger all <laughs> in explaining where the yeah. hell these guys came from beyond merchandising. Um, and so I, I like the idea that they were starting to set up, especially because, and I called us. Um, that same episode when you've probably got Moff Gideon back and he's having that conversation with the rest of the I- Imperials um, yeah. one of them <laughs> is Brendel Hooks played by Brian Gleeson who is the brother of Domal Gleeson who plays General Hooks in the sequels oh. so it's his <laughs> bloody dad who's about as corrupt as a stupid son I'm the spy <laughs> <laughs> I'm a spy. <laughs> like of course, of course you are. What? You are Why does he to... sound like he's like a half serpent now? Uh, bec- I'm the spy. because he's been learning from from Lord from Lord Voldemort, obviously. Also starring Domhnall Gleeson. <laughs> Actually, as it turns out, I'm a <laughs> I'm a slippery spy. <laughs> <laughs> Still would have been better. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't actually click on that. Yeah, you know what? It, it, took, it took us a few seconds because I was looking at his face thinking, hmm, okay. You know what actually tipped it off? It's the fact that when he says his name, the first thing I thought was actually beginning of episode 8 when Poe's just like, just like talking down to Hooks over the radio and he refers to him as General Hugs. I thought I heard Hugs <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. no way. <laughs> yeah. I also really like the fact that, you know, speaking of like this, you know, bit of an obsession with cloning, how Moff is just like, cloning's your obsession, not mine. I'm like, Moff, you absolute liar. I was like, you are talking <laughs> such <up>. garbage <laughs> right now. <laughs> At the same time, though, like, no, Moff, don't kid yeah. yourself. Come on. <laughs> I do like the fact, though, that even though they're all like a group, they're clearly not actually together because they're all sort of like... No, I'm I'm not doing this. I'm doing this instead. Don't Honestly, like the way that they communicate with each other, it literally feels like this is the first meeting in a very long time. <laughs> because of it five, probably like, is. <laughs> yeah, because like one of them is so like accepting. She's like, "Oh yeah, great idea, mm-hmm. guys." Mm. Then the other person is like, mm, oh, "No, I'm not so sure." And the other one's like, oh, "I don't care." What it does confirm? Long live the Empire! Though, woohoo! Is because especially because we had Star Wars Celebration like a week or two ago and that dropped the Ahsoka trailer we saw our first glimpse from the back of Grand Admiral Throne um, once again played by Lars Mikkelsen yes. who voices him in Star Wars Rebels I'm like cracking job well done um, 
but you actually get thrown name dropped in this episode as well and you're like okay we all know where this is going now um <laughs> so he's obviously in ahsoka he's probably gonna show up in mandalorian season four and i think that the movie that dear filoni's directing which is going to tie them all together all the mandalverse stuff is probably yeah. going to be thrown i think um which i'm like okay i'm fine with that um, I know next to bugger all about Thrawn, um, beyond the random bits of clips I've seen from, from Star Wars Rebels. Um, just, again, I've never fully watched, I've only watched um, mostly the Ahsoka stuff. Again, I'm just a little bit obsessed with like Ahsoka post-Clone Wars. Um, especially after Mandalorian Season 2, I was like, yep, I just realised I love this character. Bugger. <laughs> um, but it's inter- it's what's interesting and annoying, because it's like, ooh, we're setting up yeah. for something more interesting. And that's exactly that. Because while we're currently, I'm like... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Let's just wrap <laughs> it up so we can do something else. And I hate thinking like that. I really do. Especially as a massive Star yeah. Wars fan as I am. And I'm kind of sat there thinking, this isn't grabbing me. It's not. And it's... And considering it's like a finale as well, like, you want a finale to just, like, absolutely hook into your skin. And this does kind of the opposite. It's sort of kind of pulling away from your skin mm. but not in like a good way it's just like yeah we need to wrap this up guys <laughs> yeah 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 i mean lucky because i mean you've got eight episodes you've got plenty of time and yet by the end it feels quite rushed because like oh god we've got the rest of this to, to to finish unfortunately i'll tell you what it bloody reminded me of and i'm sorry to reference bloody chin ball again ah <laughs> oh. No, well, here's the thing. no, 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 no. I don't enjoy it, but it did actually remind me of that because it's like, oh, I've got all these things I have to finish. Um, yeah, there, done. I'm like, um, let's just hastily I'm do like, it. Uh, Chris, you haven't actually done anything, and he's like, shh, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then he leaves. <laughs> what? So, why can I just imagine him like, you know, when um, I mean, like, you know, it's kind of going back to Star Wars, but you know, in episode four when they're all in the land speeder and he basically just does the mind trick on the stormtroopers <laughs> yes it's like that. i could just imagine him like doing that with like you haven't wrote anything i've wrote a script you've wrote a script <laughs> <laughs> i will explain it yeah, all I later him doing that. he will explain it all later you will explain it all later <laughs> enjoy i will consequences what? will not happen till later <laughs> <laughs> oh, t- yeah i mean it's I, I like the fa- I like the whole Moff Gideon's quest for power leads to a pretty entertaining fight and quite a lot of casualties on both sides. Mm-hmm. But as a finale, it didn't really grab me in truthfulness compared to season two. Yeah, it's weird because it's certainly more action oriented, including the including the crashing of a cruiser, which I'm like, yes, finally they got rid of that bloody cruiser. <laughs> I mean, like, I love it; it's awesome. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a lot more action or oriented but then because of that the story kind of suffers i do like the final shot yeah. though. that's actually quite nice it's, it's it goes like yeah i know we kind of alluded to this being like a space western let's literally have him end as if it's an actual western you've just got him like sat outside his mandalorian bungalow as i'm now as i'm now going to refer it to <laughs> <laughs> just sort of like sitting on like a chair just sort of like watching the sun go down as as grog is playing with like the frogs I'm like, you couldn't have made it more obvious, but I yeah. kind of love it. It's, yeah, it's like the most Western yeah. thing ever. Especially considering it does like the whole sort of like circle close transition thing, but it ends it just briefly on Grogu as he's playing with... With Grogu's face, <laughs> I was like, yeah. yeah, okay, I quite like that. It's cheesy as hell, but I quite like it. It would have been even more cheesy, like, if you, if you had, like, the like the piss that he uses like in his hand and he just sort of like spins it around and then back in the holster you know mm. i think that would have been like over cheese though you know i feel like he's done it before well i mean jangle fett did it in episode two so it's absolutely fine yeah i was gonna say like you're allowed to do that yeah um well we don't really want to be reminded of episode two so there's worse star wars I somehow <laughs> there's worse how is that possible <laughs> we didn't think it was possible and yet here we are <laughs> bloody jabrams 
<laughs> um, oh, I will say, like, I'm I'm pleased that like they've. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm immature as hell, but I do like the fact that they've made Grogu a little bit more comedic as well. Yeah, I'm I'm waiting to see what they do with season four because, especially now, because I've literally just just to do it as we're recording, I've seen like a little bit of fan art that someone had come up with of especially at the end um, when it it goes right back to the beginning of season three with the little kid who's about to not be baptised but you know like the Mandalorian equivalent um, but he gets it properly yeah. in the living waters of Mandalore and then and then there's Grogu and Din Djarin, and he's like I'd, I'd like Grogu to actually take it and stuff like that and initially I was thinking is he gonna have like a Mandalorian helmet that sort of fits around his head because bear in mind he's got Quite, yeah, quite big ears. I was ears. thinking that as well. And there's and there's some fan art of him wielding a little lightsaber and a pistol, and he's got like a Mandalorian helmet, um, and, it's, and, it's, and it's even <laughs> got like ear guards. And I'm sat there thinking, you know what? Oh my god! In my head, it looked stupid. Like this, it looks awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm always wondering that because like, other is the helmet just going to cover like his face, or is it going to be the ears mm-hmm. too? Because that is going to require some. Bloody hard work from the armor. <laughs> yeah, because we all know who's actually gonna, you know, we know where the enemy's gonna shoot first. It's gonna be the ears because it's fairly obvious. Bit difficult to hide. <laughs> Just chop them off. Yeah. Um. Well, actually, speaking of the armor, before like we wrap up, I was convinced we were gonna see a face this season. Yeah, I was really quite convinced as well. I I literally thought with like you know when the armorer basically asks to see Bo-Katan and she asks Bo-Katan to take off her helmet. I literally thought she was going to mm-hmm. do that as well. Oh, because, yeah. Like, you know, they're, they're only speaking to each other. I literally thought that was going to be it. I'm like, you're playing a dangerous game here and I like it. Yeah, I, saying, I, can, I can remember watching it with me governor and both of us just all, like looked at each other like, oh my god, this is it. We're finally, at, oh. This is it. <laughs> and apparently this was not the no, way. No, it wasn't the way. Um... <laughs> One, my question is why we haven't referenced the mythosaur. Um, the the pops of it's because it's pointless. Um, <laughs> annoyingly, I mean, it shows up twice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like... end of episode two and the end of episode eight. I know they have actual individual chapter titles. Um, j- just just for consistency. <laughs> yeah, it's easier to kind of go through when you're just yeah. given the episode because people are like, oh yeah, I remember mm-hmm. that episode. Yes. Yeah, in episode two, it is I, and then in the well, the penultimate, you see the entirety of it when it just decides to attack the Mandalorian uh, pirate ship. It's not, though. Because why that not? isn't actually the Mythosaur. It's just... It's... Oh, is no, it? No, it's, ju- it's, ju- it's just a different monster. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can not well, right. watch something thinking, oh, yes, fine. Oh, wait, where the hell is this weird ear tusk things? They're yeah, because I, I was going to say, like, you're not the weird ear tusk monster. You're a different monster. This is not tusk. <laughs> For context, listen to Graveyard Chick Chat. <laughs> I'm not giving you the context, there. Yep. I saw that film. Um, yeah, bit of a tangent there with virtually everything, but that kind of encompasses the season as a whole. It's just a bit, there's stuff over there, there's stuff over there, there's stuff here, there's some stuff over yeah. there. It's all make it come together. And it kind of works. It's a bit spaced out, but yeah. it's kind of loosely tied together. Like, you know, some episodes do work really well, and then you kind of get episodes like the... I don't know what episode it is, but basically Jack Black's cameo, along with Christopher Lloyd's cameo. And the battle droids, that one is which was awesome. I did like seeing the battle droids. <laughs> I, I tell you what, like, I just... I, it's just such an odd episode. Oh, like, yeah. Like, jeez. Like, it doesn't really exist for any specific reason. It's just sort of... Da-da. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why the episode exists. The episode exists so Pedro Pascal can kick some battle droids, apparently, <laughs> and just piss them I off. I also would. <laughs> that, that's the aim of that entire episode. I just love that they really... Because one of the things I actually love about the Clone Wars is how comedic they take the droids, especially with the voices. And I'm like, this, this episode just fully commits to that and i'm like that's ah, just beautiful especially after playing um the new lego star wars and the droids are just hilarious <laughs> and that's like i love them so much 
<laughs> and like even just listening to them like arguing in the Clone Wars, I'm like, it's it's just perfect. I, th- I think at one point he's like telling one droid um like to go in this direction. And he's like, um, I don't really want to do that. And he's like, shut up, Sergeant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you actually have the brain capacity to tell him to shut up? Brilliant! <laughs> just as bluntly as that as well. <laughs> it's just a voice, I can't help it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm still very much on the positive end with Mandalorian Season 3. It's just a bit all yeah. over the place, I think. And it's... I'm still v- generally kind of on the fence as to where Star Wars is going to be. Obviously, it's very much in the realm of TV now. You've got Ahsoka coming out later this year. You've got The Acolytes next year, which I am actually yes. quite intrigued to see now. I wasn't initially. Uh, stuff I've been learning about, especially because it's, again, delving into The Last Jedi with the weird per- perceived the Jedi as quite, quite stupid, because they are. Um, you know, it's their own fault that they're all dead. Um... <laughs> And this series is very much going to delve into that, but from the perspective of the Sith. Like, okay, cool. Um, and then you've got the three movies that they're doing, one of them with Rhea, one of them with Mando, and then a biblical epic done by James Mangold. I'm like, what's actually happening with Star Wars now? Um, yeah, like, hopefully this isn't going to be like a DCEU situation. <laughs> We're not talking about that again. We spoke about it last week, Dan. I'm <laughs> not like, doing it again. Hopefully, hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully Star Wars... I don't trust Star Wars to, to go in that direction. I trust it to just actually be competent. <laughs> I mean, one can only hope. Um, because yeah. here's the thing. I can't even compare this to Andor because I didn't watch it. And it's kicking me because yeah, I've heard nothing but great stuff about it. I have seen the post credit scene of the final episode, which has the Death Star in it. Um, spoilers. Even though everyone knows that because... Christ almighty. Where else is it going to be? <laughs> Star Killer Base. Stupid name, um, but yeah, I, I, as I say, I still enjoyed the season for the most part. But it's just, I'm trying to be careful because I'm not trying to go with like, oh, what I wanted wasn't in the series, so therefore it's bad. It's a case of what is there. Yeah, it just didn't really grab me, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same way in in respect, mm-hmm. like th- there's some good stuff, but there's some stuff that doesn't quite grab me yeah um particularly in the penultimate yeah i mean there's a lot of stuff that happens in that but also nothing that's just really annoying yeah um and very very quick wrapping up of everything at the end much like this episode which we're going to quickly wrap up (laughs) (laughs) um but yes that's been our thoughts on the mandalorian season three Uh, as i say quite scatterbrained of an episode both the season and this episode because there's just so many random bits to talk about because it's just lots and lots of stuff. Um, but if you enjoyed us, of course, as ever, leave a rating, share it around, like, whatever, all that sort of uh, nice stuff. So because of the way the episodes are going out now, you know, we record this on a Sunday, it goes out on a Tuesday to give yourself some extra time to actually edit. And um, this is technically the last episode for April. So next week will be the first one for me. Um, that one will still be for Alien Isolation, which both of us have been replaying um, to varying degrees of success. <laughs> I kind of skipped ahead to Mission 4 so I could deal with the alien quicker, and I died quicker, <laughs> and lost about half an hour's worth of progress. We'll get to that. Like, absolutely. Because there's some... I absolutely hate that little bastard. <laughs> I really do. I was hoping there wouldn't be any swearing in this. It's fine. I already said bastard earlier, so it's fine. Um, but yes. Here's yes, the work and jaws. <laughs> Are you quite finished? No! No, I'm not quite finished. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to be muttering that for a week now, aren't you? <laughs> Doing work and jaws and the... <laughs> And it has a jaws. Don't do I bits. I was born on a straw ball. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist. Yeah, just couldn't help yourself, could you? Much like Moff Gideon with a dark saber, I just couldn't resist not breaking it. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, that's been it for this for this week's episode of the Real Podcast. This is before Dan loses his mind. I think he's about to. It's like orange peel, working jaws. <laughs> Save points. 
Um, yeah, I'm basically going to have like PTSD flashbacks like Grogu did. Imagine if Grogu versus Xenomorph. <laughs> anyway, we're not doing that. We're talking about Alien next week. Uh, but yes, thank you very much for listening as ever. Uh, until then, it is goodbye from Dan. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.